Bless the Lord, O my soul, and never forget all his benefits. It is he who forgives all your sins. In the name of the Father, and of the Son, and of the Holy Spirit. Amen. The Lord be with you. Welcome to all of you who are taking part in our Saturday Mass on this, the Saturday of the third week of Lent. Today the scripture themes are, as is often the case on Saturdays, about repentance and confession and forgiveness. But today the scriptures remind us that that repentance is not a matter of outward words, but a matter of what's in our hearts. Let's pray that today and every day of Lent, we may be able to look deep within ourselves to see where we truly need to return to the Lord. We do that now as we begin our Mass by calling to mind our sins and asking for the gift of God's mercy. Have mercy on us, O Lord, for we have sinned against you. Show us, O Lord, your mercy and grant us your salvation. May Almighty God have mercy on us, forgive us our sins, and bring us to everlasting life. Amen. Lord, have mercy. Christ, have mercy. Lord, have mercy. Let us pray. Rejoicing in this annual celebration of our Lenten observance, we pray, O Lord, that with our hearts set on the Paschal mysteries, we may be gladdened by their full effects. We ask this through our Lord Jesus Christ, your Son, who lives and reigns with you in the unity of the Holy Spirit, God forever and ever. Amen. A reading from the prophet Hosea. The Lord says this, They will search for me in their misery. Come, let us return to the Lord. He has torn us to pieces, but he will heal us. He has struck us down, but he will bandage our wounds. After a day or two, he will bring us back to life. On the third day, he will raise us, and we shall live in his presence. Let us set ourselves to know the Lord, that he will come is as certain as the dawn. He will come to us as showers come, like spring rains watering the earth. What am I to do with you, Ephraim? What am I to do with you, Judah? This love of yours is like a morning cloud, like the dew that quickly disappears. This is why I have torn them to pieces by the prophets why I slaughtered them with words from my mouth. His judgment will rise like the light, since what I want is love, not sacrifice, knowledge of God, not holocausts. The word of the Lord. Thanks be to God. What I want is love, not sacrifice. Have mercy on me, God, in your kindness. In your compassion, blot out my offence. O wash me more and more from my guilt and cleanse me from my sin. What I want is love, not sacrifice. For in sacrifice you take no delight. Burnt offering from me you would refuse. My sacrifice, a contrite spirit, a humbled, contrite heart, you will not spurn. What I want is love, not sacrifice. In your goodness show favour to Zion, rebuild the walls of Jerusalem, then you will be pleased with lawful sacrifice, burnt offerings wholly consumed. What I want is love, not sacrifice. Praise to you, Lord, glory to you, Christ. You are the word of God. Harden not your hearts today, 
but listen to the voice of the Lord. Praise to you, Lord. Glory to you, Christ. You are the word of God. The Lord be with you. A reading from the Holy Gospel according to Luke. Glory to you, O Lord. Jesus spoke the following parable to some people who prided themselves on being virtuous and despised everyone else. Two men went up to the temple to pray, one a Pharisee, the other a tax collector. The Pharisee stood there and said this prayer to himself, I thank you, God, that I am not grasping, unjust, adulterous like the rest of mankind, and particularly that I am not like this tax collector here. I fast twice a week. I pay tithes on all I get. The tax collector stood some distance away, not daring even to raise his eyes to heaven, but he beat his breast and said, God, be merciful to me, a sinner. This man, I tell you, went home again at rights with God. The other did not. For everyone who exalts himself will be humbled, but the man who humbles himself will be exalted. The Gospel of the Lord. Praise to you, Lord Jesus Christ. It's when you re read a gospel passage like that that you realise what a wonderful preacher, what a wonderful storyteller Jesus was. Such a hard-hitting story with such an obvious message that, in a sense, you don't need me to say anything about it. The contrast between the two characters in that story is remarkable. Almost caricatures, almost pushed to extremes, but this is how Jesus is making his point. He wants to, as it were, prod the consciences of those people who, as St Luke tells us, prided themselves on being virtuous and despised everyone else. The Pharisees' virtue is not in question here. What's in question is the pride. The pride that, in a sense, isolates him. Notice how it says, he says this prayer, not to God, but to himself. It's almost like a closed circle. It's almost like he's in a bubble, if I can still use that word in the current climate. This Pharisee is not open to God, or indeed open to others. Notice how, even while saying his little prayer, he still manages to get a dig in at the tax collector lurking behind him in the temple. He is closed in. And that sometimes is the danger of a preoccupation with the external, about those visible things that we can almost like tick the boxes off. Oh yes, I'm fasting on my Fridays, I'm abstaining from meat. Yes, I, I say my prayers, I've got my little list of prayers I say every day, I go to Mass on Sunday when, when we can. I tick all the boxes, there's nothing wrong with me. And yet perhaps there are attitudes inside our hearts. Perhaps there is selfishness there. Perhaps we're engaged in gossip or in bad-mouthing other people. Perhaps we're doing things in our workplace or in our financial investments that actually don't bear much scrutiny. All of those external things, the boxes that we tick, that's not where virtue lies. In the response to the psalm, again, it was all summed up so beautifully. These are the words of God, the God who loves us, the God who offers us forgiveness and mercy, but who says to us, what I want is love, not sacrifice. I don't just want you to tick the boxes of religion, I want you to love me, and then allow that love to penetrate into everything else. So today, on our Lenten journey, Let's just pause, if we can, for a moment to think about whether our religion is just a matter of ticking boxes to any degree, great or small, and whether we need to look a little bit deeper into ourselves to find that love that God asks of us. So we think of the prayers that we bring to the Lord for our Mass today. First, let's pray for ourselves that our Lenten journey may truly be helping us to look deeper into our own lives, to see where we may need to change in order to receive the Lord's loving mercy. Lord, in your mercy, hear our prayer. Let's pray for the world in which we live, 
perhaps especially for people who have no love of God, who have no time for God, that our example of faithful trust may help others to see what they are missing. Lord, in your mercy, hear our prayer. For a moment in silence, let's each think of our own prayers and intentions for Mass today. We pray with our Mother Mary, saying, Hail Mary, full of grace, the Lord is with thee. Blessed art thou among women, and blessed is the fruit of thy womb, Jesus. Holy Mary, Mother of God, pray for us sinners now and at the hour of our death. Amen. Most loving Father, you desire love, not sacrifice. Grant that we may look deep into our hearts so that the outward observ observances of our faith may always respect hearts full of love. We ask this through Christ our Lord. Amen. Pray, brothers and sisters, that my sacrifice and yours may be acceptable to God, the Almighty Father. May the Lord accept the sacrifice at my hands for the praise and glory of his name, for our good and the good of all his holy church. O God, by whose grace it comes to pass that we may approach your mysteries with minds made pure, grant, we pray, that in reverently handing them on, we may offer you fitting homage. We ask this through Christ our Lord. Amen. The Lord be with you. Lift up your hearts. Let us give thanks to the Lord our God. It is truly right and just that we should always give you thanks, Lord, Holy Father, almighty and eternal God. For you do not cease to spur us on to possess a more abundant life. And being rich in mercy, you constantly offer pardon and call on sinners to trust in your forgiveness alone. Never did you turn away from us. And though time and time again, we have broken your covenant, you have bound the human family to yourself through Jesus, your son, our redeemer, with a new bond of love so tight that it can never be undone. Even now, you set before your people a time of grace and reconciliation, and as they turn back to you in spirit, you grant them hope in Christ Jesus and a desire to be of service to all, while they entrust themselves more fully to the Holy Spirit. And so, filled with wonder, we extol the power of your love, and proclaiming our joy at the salvation that comes from you, we join in the heavenly hymn of countless hosts, as without end we acclaim. Holy, holy, holy Lord God of hosts, heaven and earth are full of your glory. 
Hosanna in the highest. Blessed is he who comes in the name of the Lord. Hosanna in the highest. You are indeed holy, O Lord, and from the world's beginning are ceaselessly at work so that the human race may become holy, just as you yourself are holy. Look, we pray, upon your people's offerings and pour out upon them the power of your Spirit, that they may become the body and blood of your beloved Son, Jesus Christ, in whom we too are your sons and daughters. Indeed, though once we were lost and could not approach you, you loved us with the greatest love. For your Son, who alone is just, handed himself over to death and did not disdain to be nailed for our sake to the wood of the cross. But before his arms were outstretched between heaven and earth to become the lasting sign of your covenant, he desired to celebrate the Passover with his disciples. As he ate with them, he took bread, and giving you thanks, he said the blessing, broke the bread, and gave it to them, saying, Take this, all of you, and eat of it. For this is my body, which will be given up for you. In a similar way, when supper was ended, knowing that he was about to reconcile all things in himself through his blood to be shed on the cross, he took the chalice, filled with the fruit of the vine, and once more giving you thanks, handed the chalice to his disciples, saying, Take this, all of you, and drink from it. For this is the chalice of my blood, the blood of the new and eternal covenant, which will be poured out for you and for many for the forgiveness of sins. Do this in memory of me. The mystery of faith, we proclaim your death, O Lord, and profess your resurrection until you come again. Therefore, as we celebrate the memorial of your Son, Jesus Christ, who is our Passover and our surest peace, we celebrate his death and resurrection from the dead, and looking forward to his blessed coming, we offer you, who are our faithful and merciful God, this sacrificial victim who reconciles to you the human race. Look kindly, most compassionate Father, on those you unite to yourself by the sacrifice of your Son, and grant that by the power of the Holy Spirit, as they partake in this one bread and one chalice, they may be gathered into one body in Christ, who heals every division. Be pleased to keep us always in communion of mind and heart, together with Francis, our Pope, and John, our Bishop. Help us to work together for the coming of your kingdom until the hour when we stand before you, saints among the saints in the halls of heaven, with the Blessed Virgin Mary, Mother of God, with Blessed Joseph, her spouse, the Blessed Apostles and all the saints, and with our deceased brothers and sisters, whom we humbly commend to your mercy. Then, freed at last from the wound of corruption and made fully into a new creation, we shall sing to you with gladness the thanksgiving of Christ, who lives for all eternity. Through him and with him and in him, O God, Almighty Father, in the unity of the Holy Spirit, all glory and honour is yours, forever and ever. Amen.
At the Saviour's command and formed by divine teaching, we dare to say, Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread and forgive us our trespasses as we forgive those who trespass against us. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. Deliver us, Lord, we pray, from every evil. Graciously grant peace in our days, that by the help of your mercy, we may be always free from sin and safe from all distress, as we await the blessed hope and the coming of our Saviour, Jesus Christ. For the kingdom, the power and the glory are yours, now and forever. Lord Jesus Christ, who said to your apostles, Peace I leave you, my peace I give you. Look not on our sins, but on the faith of your church, and graciously grant her peace and unity, in accordance with your will, who live and reign forever and ever. Amen. The peace of the Lord be with you always. Lamb of God, you take away the sins of the world. Have mercy on us. Lamb of God, you take away the sins of the world. Have mercy on us. Lamb of God, you take away the sins of the world. Grant us peace. Behold the Lamb of God. Behold him who takes away the sins of the world. Blessed are those called to the supper of the Lamb. Lord, I am not worthy that you should enter under my roof, but only say the word and my soul shall be healed. The tax collector stood at a distance, beating his breast and saying, O oh God, be merciful to me, a sinner. Let us pray. May we truly revere, O Lord, O merciful Lord, these holy gifts by which you ceaselessly nourish us. And may we always partake of them with abundant faith in our heart. We ask this through Christ our Lord. Amen. The Lord be with you. Bow your heads for the blessing. Hold out to your faithful people, Lord, the right hand of heavenly assistance, that they may seek you with all their heart and merit the granting of what they ask. We make our prayer through Christ our Lord. Amen. And may Almighty God bless you, the Father 
and the Son and the Holy Spirit. Amen. The Mass is ended. Let us bless the Lord. Thanks be to God. Ave Regina Celorum, Ave Domina Angelorum, Salve Radix, Salve Porta, Ex qua mundo lux est orta, Gaude Virgo Gloriosa, Super omnes speciosa, vale o valde decora, et pro nobis Christum exorvar.